Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Jeffrey Wu, and I'm the creator of MIGS Tips. I recently finished my two-year AAGO fellowship in minimum invasive gynecological surgery at Scripps Clinic in San Diego, and now I'm an assistant professor at Eastern Virginia Medical School Division of Advanced Gynecological Surgery. First and foremost, I want to thank Allotrope Medical for allowing me to speak today. The name of my lecture is The Ureter, Both Our Friend and Foe. Hopefully, by the end of this lecture, you'll have a better understanding of the ureter and possible pitfalls and view it more as your friend rather than your foe. Look over yonder. What do you see? I'll start off with a review of some basic ureter anatomy, then I'll review some common sites of ureteral injury, then I'll move on to the various modalities of ureteral identification, which include surgical, mechanical, chemical, and the recent most novel modality, electrical stimulation. Then I'll end with some tips and tricks to avoid injury. Ureter anatomy, they're bilateral thin, about three to four millimeters in diameter, tubular structures that connect the kidney to the urinary bladder. They're about 25 to 30 centimeters in length. Interestingly, the left ureter is longer due to the more cranial position of the left kidney. Ureteral blood supply. The ureter's blood supply is segmental. The upper ureter receives its blood supply from the renal arteries. The middle ureter receives its blood supplies from the common iliac artery, branches of the abdominal aorta, and gonadal arteries. While the distal ureter receives its blood supply from the internal iliac artery, specifically mostly from the superior vesicle artery. The ureter is composed of three main layers. First is the inner mucosa, also known as the transitional epithelium, which allows for the expansion of the ureter with urine collection. Next is the middle muscle layer, which is composed of the longitudinal and circular layers. This allows for ureter vermiculation. And lastly is the outer adventitial sheath, also known as the fibrous coat, which houses the ureter's arterial blood supply, nerve supply, and lymphatics. Because of this, it's vitally important to maintain the ureteral sheath when conducting ureterolysis. The sun is Ureter path. The ureter starts at the ureteral pelvic junction, or the UPJ, and travels inferiorly inside the abdominal cavity, anterior to the psoas muscle, and crossing over the iliac vessels. Here's a video clip demonstrating those relationships. The path of the ureter is along the anterior edge of the psoas muscle in close proximity to the gonadal vessels. Note that the ureter is most superficial and easily visualized at the point crossing over the iliac vessels. If you are having issues visualizing the ureter, always consider locating it at a more cephalad location. This retroperitoneal dissection is demonstrating the classical anatomical relationship of water under the bridge, where the ureter travels underneath the uterine artery en route to where it enters the posterior wall of the bladder, where it incorporates into the trigone. So don't you give up now. Next, we'll discuss ureteral injury. The most common site of ureteral injury is at the pelvic brim. This is where the ureter is very close in proximity to the gonadal vessels. This can be further exaggerated with distorted anatomy, as demonstrated in this video.
The next two common occurrences of uterine injury are within the lower pelvis. The first is during uterine artery ligation, where the ureter is within the cardinal ligament crossing under the uterine artery at the level of the uterine isthmus. A critical technique to avoid this complication is to place cephalod pressure on the uterus to a distance from the uterine isthmus and the ureter. As shown, without cephalod pressure, the ureter is in danger of injury. With cephalad pressure, ureter uterine isthmus distance is created. This concept is further emphasized in a recent study where the ureters were lit up with ICG and ureter uterine isthmus distance measurements were taken with and without uterine cephalad pressure. I got my peaches out in Georgia, oh yeah shit I get my weed from California, that's that shit I took my chick up to the north, yeah, badass bitch I get my light right from the source, yeah, yeah that's it And I see you, oh, the way I breathe you in It's the texture of your skin I wanna wrap my arms around you, baby, never let you go And I see you, it's nothing like your touch It's the way you lift me up Lastly, uterine injury can occur at the end of the procedure during cup closure. As shown in this video, the ureter can lie within two centimeters of the vaginal apex during cup closure. Next, we'll go over a modality of techniques to identify the ureter. This includes surgical dissection, mechanical identification, including stenting with and without endocyanine green, chemical using IS001, and the newest method, electrical stimulation with stem site. These next two videos will show a surgical dissection of the lateral and medial approach, respectively, for the identification of the ureter. Grasping the gonadal vessels and pulling medially exposes an avascular triangle that allows for retroperitoneal entry.
Next, we will discuss a mechanical modality using urinal stenting with and without endocyanine green. For this demonstration, we use a 30 degree lens, 22 French sheath, 6 French 70 centimeter polyurethane ureteral catheter, and standard camera and light source. Slide the 30 degree lens into the 22 French sheath and lock together. Slide the catheter into the rubber nipple approximately 4 centimeters and place the nipple on the opening catheter port. Advance and retract the catheter until just shielded by the sheath. Once the ureter orifice is identified, the catheter is slowly advanced. If the catheter's orientation does not align with the opening, rotate the catheter or camera to redirect and align. The single black lines represent one centimeter, while the group back lines are multiples of five. This represents 10 centimeters. Discontinue advancement if significant resistance is met. Depending on the location and extent of disease, 15 to 20 centimeters of catheter may be advanced. In addition to ureteral stenting, endocyanine green can be retrograde injected into the ureters. Chemical Intravenous IS001. Currently, this is an investigational medication and should only be utilized in clinical trials until FDA approval. The peak fluorescent intensity is 10 minutes after administration and lasts for greater than one hour. Lastly, we will end with the most novel modality of ureteral identification by electric stimulation using StemSight. StemSight connects to the surgeon's existing laparoscopic and robotic bipolar instruments to allow the surgeon to deliver a brief, low-powered electrical signal that mimics the body's own signal to trigger ureteral movement or vermiculation. The StemSight signal box has universal capability to many of our common ESUs. When ureter identification is desired, simply select Stem on the StemSight signal box and use the dedicated stem site foot pedal to activate. This will provide on-demand ureter vermiculation that allows for mapping of the ureter's direction and course in many situations. Including patients with elevated body mass indexes, and as a confirmation at the end of procedures. I got my peaches out in Georgia. Oh, yeah, shit. I get my weed from California. That's that shit. I took my chick up to the north. Yeah, badass bitch. I get my light right from the source. Yeah, yeah, that's it. I get the feeling so I'm sure. And in my hand because I'm yours I can't, I can't pretend I can't ignore you right for me Don't think you wanna know just where I've been oh. Don't be distracted The one I need is right in my arms Your kisses taste the sweetest with mine And I'll be right here with you till the end I got my peaches out in Georgia Oh yeah shit I get my weed from California That's that shit Including remarks Meticulous surgical technique and knowledge of anatomy are the foundations of ureteral identification. Utilizing a variety of methods and modalities for ureteral identification and its course may assist a surgeon in minimizing ureteral injury during pelvic surgery. Lastly, electrical stimulation technology can put a surgeon at ease by allowing for the use of pre-existing instruments to rapidly visualize the ureter and its path on demand in many clinical situations. Thank you very much. The sun is rising. Most definitely.